those who have been here with us for a few months, you know that we have been studying the book of John, the Apostle John, who wrote for all of us. He wrote for the people uh, who lived during his time, but it's also for all of us right now who live thousands of years after him. It's very encouraging and it points us to Jesus and it points us to who he really is. And the Lord talks about himself a lot in this passage. Let's pray and start. Lord, I pray that you would direct and lead us today, that your word today would be an instrument that changes our hearts and gives us life that we could follow you. I pray that you would bless this time. In your name we pray, amen. Have you ever seen someone sick? A fairly we weird question, but have you ever seen someone sick? Maybe very seriously sick. You've probably seen or come across that sometimes. If you've never seen that, praise the Lord, but we live in a broken world, and so probably everyone has seen it or will see in their lifetime. Have you ever seen anyone die or witnessed anyone die? Probably. Maybe you haven't witnessed it yet, but again, we live in a broken world. So there will probably be a moment in your life when you will witness someone's death. And we know that all of us will die. One day we will all die. Have you ever seen someone resurrect from the dead? Is there anyone here like that? I would like to meet you. I personally have never seen someone be resurrected. And I think, and I think the Lord has a reason why I haven't seen that in my life. An interesting thing, if you've seen someone in front of you repent and believe in God as his, as his Lord and Savior, then you have been a witness to resurrection, a spiritual resurrection, because, because the person was spiritually dead and was born again to eternal life. He has gained salvation and life. And praise the Lord for that. And I pray that all of you in this room would have seen more and more of these spiritual resurrections and that you would be instruments in God's hands to bring people this hope and see them resurrect. Praise the Lord for that. But today we're going to be reading a story uh, from the Bible that talks about a physical resurrection. One of those stories is what we're going to be reading today, the story of how Jesus resurrected Lazarus. This is what we're going to be reading about today. God uh, gifted a physical resurrection so that the spiritually dead might find eternal life and will be resurrected for eternal life. So let's look at the story together. We're going to be reading John chapter 11, verses 1 through 27. I will be reading from the ESV. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who appointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you are going to go there again? Jesus answered, 
Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called twin, said to his disciples, Let us always also go, that we may die with him. Verse 17. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Amen. This story that talks that we're going to be looking at today, uh, we're going to be looking at it two Sundays. Today we're going to start. And today we're going to look at three points. First, the first is that Lazarus' illness was for the glory of God. The second is that what we're going to look at is the conversation of Jesus and his disciples. And the third point is we're going to look at Jesus' conversation with Martha. Next week, we're going to keep looking at the story and where it goes. Those who have already read it have already know what is going to, it's going to be about. So today we're going to look at these three points. So let's look at them together. The story starts with Lazarus' sickness. In the 10th ch chapter, if we look at it, in the 40 40th chapter, it talks about where Jesus was. Jesus went to Jordan again, where he was baptized by John, and remained there. And after that, is when we have the story of someone coming to Jesus and telling him about Lazarus's sickness. So he was at the Jordan River. Jesus, having heard this, said that this sickness is not does not lead to death, but is for the glory of God. He said that the Son of God will be glorified through this. And it also says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister. And when he heard that Lazarus was silk, it said that Lazarus, uh, sorry, that Jesus went to Lazarus immediately. No, it says after hearing that Lazarus was sick, he remained there two days. It's a little bit weird, a little bit of a weird reaction knowing that Jesus loves Lazarus and loves Martha and Mary, knowing that they are waiting for him. But he's purposefully waiting. And later we're going to see why he says he did that. And then I wanted us to pay attention that the, when the story was written in the first century, the first Christians 
the first and second generation of Christians. These Christians were going through a lot of different trials in their lives. They were also sick and died, and they died for Christ because there's a lot of persecution and they were followed. And these are the people to whom this uh, book was written to so that they may be encouraged. And we will see why. When we think about why are we sick? Why do we get sick? We know that it's because sin came into a world and so trials and sicknesses came with them. But we believe that the Lord can work these sicknesses for his glory. Glory. Even Lazarus' death was used for his glory. And we can see how Martha and Mary were sorrowful for their brother. And they tried many different things to help him. And as a, as a last thing that they did, they called for Jesus, knowing that Jesus has the power to heal him. They believe that he can come and heal. If we remember a few chapters again, we remember that Jesus healed a lot of different sick people. He healed the blind so that they can see. And we're going to read a lot of different passages, uh, many more passages that talk about Jesus healing. So what can we take out of this first part of the passage? That Lazarus' illness was for the glory of God. So what we can take out is that, first of all, trust Jesus. He knows our needs and our sufferings. We must remember that he loves us. He loved Lazarus. He loved his sisters. And he loves us because we are his creation. And he doesn't want us to be sick. And it's not why we're sick. And we don't even know why we're sick. But one of the things is the consequences of sin. How can sicknesses show the glory of God? They show us, uh, they open to us the supernatural God who is ruler over heaven and earth. And we know that it, is, it isn't in our control. The sick, uh, people are sick whether they're poor or rich. Either they have a prestigious role or they're out in the streets. God is supernatural and he is the ruler over heaven and earth. Sicknesses also uh, attract us towards Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus says Martha and Mary knowing that they can come to Jesus. They believe that they can go to him for healing. And just like them, we can go to Christ knowing that he can heal. But the most important, sicknesses can, he can be an instrument for the greatest good in our lives, which is the saving of a soul. Because ultimately for Jesus isn't our physical health it is our spiritual health that is the most important it is us believing in him and coming to him sicknesses also reassure our faith our faith is strengthened in our sicknesses because we can no longer rely on ourselves we have to rely on god so we rely on him we pray to him we think on him a lot more so even in such circumstances, we can be glorifying God. It's a very important part of the first seven verses. After he heard that Lazarus was sick, was sick he remained two more days, which is very interesting. And next, we're going to look at the conversation of Jesus with his disciples. After this, he told his disciples, let's go to Judea again. And his disciples tell him, we just were there. 
Do you remember what happened then? Does anyone remember what happened in the last few chapters? Why don't they want to go back to Judea? Because they wanted, they were going to be stoned. So their lives were in danger. And for him, for the, for the disciples, it's weird to go back to Judea when their lives were just in danger because they were going to be stoned. But Jesus wants to come back. So Jesus answers in a very interesting way. A bit like a parable. 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night. Those who walk during the day don't stumble because they see the light. But those who walk at night fall because there is no light in them. Very interesting Jesus' answer. Because if we look deeply, we see that Jesus is telling them, Don't worry, my time has not yet come. My life is in my Father's hands. And only He knows when I am destined to die. So you don't need to worry because God is protecting us. And just like to Him, it applies to us. We need to understand that our lives, our well-being, and our health, it's in the hands of our Father. And if it is not time, then it doesn't matter what is happening. It won't happen. That is what the Bible calls us to believe. That doesn't mean we should play with this and purposefully try to put ourselves into danger. A lot of people do things like extreme sports and put their own lives in a lot of danger. And we need to have a balance of how we believe, uh, how we believe this because we mustn't abuse it. But if we do understand that there is nothing for us to be worried about knowing that the Father holds us in His hands, then we can find rest in Him. Which is why Jesus answers, let us keep going to Lazarus. Let's go to Lazarus. Lazarus has fallen asleep. Again, we see we see how from the beginning of John throughout the whole book, Jesus talks a lot about spiritual things. But we look at the physical. We're looking at everything he says through a physical perspective. So when Jesus says that he has fallen asleep, the disciples think he, he means a physical sleep. When Jesus had said uh, the bread of life, they see it in a physical way. But Jesus is saying, no, I am more. Uh, I'm talking about the spiritual. So it's important when we're reading the Bible to apply it to our spiritual lives, what Jesus is saying. And he says, when the disciples don't understand him, he says plainly, Lazarus has died. An interesting fact that in that moment, Lazarus has died. Lazarus had already died. If you read it very carefully, when they came to tell Jesus that Lazarus is sick, uh, we know after that Jesus waits for two days. And after he comes to Bethany in two more days, it's four days. And it says that Lazarus has been dead for four days. An interesting fact that we're going to be looking uh, at a little bit more later on. And Jesus says an important thing after this. In verse 15, he says, I am glad I was not there. Why? He's not glad that Lazarus died. But he's glad that he wasn't there at that moment so that they may believe. 
He tells the disciples, I'm glad so that you can believe. And actually, the whole book of the Gospel of John, John talks, uh, tells us why he wrote this, so that we may believe. John tells us that he wrote this gospel so that we may believe in Jesus as our Messiah, as our Savior. And this is what Jesus says here, I'm glad so that you may believe. Which is when Thomas says, let us go and die with him. So to this moment, they still don't understand. They're listening and they're obeying, but they don't understand. And so now we're going to go over to the third point or third part of the passage, which is Jesus and his conversation with Martha. Coming to Bethany in, in verse 17, it says, he finds that Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. And something that's interesting is that Jews believed that the spirit and the soul of the person is still with the person for another three days after his death. So now, after four days, they were sure that nothing can be done anymore. They knew that he was dead because already four days has passed, so his soul had left him. So they knew nothing, um, they knew he was dead for sure. In verse 18, uh, it says that Bethany was close to Jerusalem. And so uh, we know that a lot of people, like relatives and friends and other people, came to Martha and Mary to console the sisters. If you've ever been to a funeral, you know that relatives usually come from far away to such occasions and neighbors and friends and since Bethany and Jerusalem weren't far away uh, we know that a lot of people came and consoled them and were with Martha and Mary and even that wasn't an accident because the goal of Jesus was that more people would see this resurrection and would believe in him being Christ and would be saved. So let's look at the reaction of Martha. Have you ever heard of Martha before this? in any sermon, in any podcast, do you know who Martha is? If you don't know who Martha is, then you could read more. Usually what's talked about Martha is, is the passage where Martha, Jesus comes to Martha and Mary, and Martha was busy while Mary was sitting at her uh, feet, at the feet of Jesus. And Martha comes to Jesus and says, why is Mary sitting at your feet while I'm preparing food? Let her come and help me. So they were very different personalities. But what's interesting is that Martha was very, a very active person. So even having heard that Jesus is coming, she isn't just waiting for him to come. She runs towards him while Mary was still sitting at the house. And so Martha, having come to Jesus, says a very interesting phrase. She says, Lord, if you had been here, he would not have died. But she continues, but even now I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Here we see that Martha, knowing that her brother had died, and she is grieving and sorrowful, and she understands that it's late, it's too late, 
after Jesus has come, but Lazarus has already died. If Jesus had come earlier, she knows that he could have healed him, but now it's too late. But Jesus here shows it is never too late for Jesus. Nothing is too late for Jesus. Jesus tells her a very, it's a very important conversation. He says, your brother will rise again. And Martha says to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall live. And it's very interesting that Martha, she believes, believes like the Pharisees in the resurrection. She believes that there's a resurrection in the last day. The Pharisees believed in this as well, but the Sadducees didn't. But the theology of Martha, she believes that there's going to be a resurrection in the final day. But again, here, Jesus focuses uh, her attention on himself. I am the resurrection and the life. I will resurrect him physically today and he will live. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. This is one of the seven statements that Jesus makes that starts with the I am phrase. I am the good shepherd. I am the door for the sheep. I am the true vine. I am the light of the world. And here he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live. This phrase, the Jews understood that the I am phrase, only God says. When God came to Moses, that is what he said, which is why they wanted to stone Jesus because he was saying heresies, he was saying that he is God. That is what they understood. But God, but sorry, but Jesus was saying the truth. He was trying to tell them, I am the one who was before Abraham and who was from the very beginning. I am the resurrection and the life. The first source of resurrection is Jesus himself. He is the resurrection. He is life. And whoever believes in him will live again. Everyone who believes in him will be resurrected. And here it says that all of us, even if we die, we shall live. Just as Martha believed that we will be resurrected in the final day. When Jesus comes again, we will all be resurrected for eternal life. Jesus says, your brother will live again. And Martha says, I know he will be resurrected in the final day. But after Jesus says that he's the resurrection and the life, he says, whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live. And everyone who lives in me shall never die. Do you believe in this? This was written for the people in the first century, and it's also for us as well. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall, live, shall never die. Do we believe in it? Just as Jesus asked Martha, he asked us, do you believe in this? And he asked everyone. And Martha answers, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. It's a very important answer. Do we believe in this as well? Is Jesus the Son of God? Is He our Savior? 
is here Messiah, the one who is promised, who is promised to us by God, that he came into this world to save us from our sins and from our spiritual death. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. And in the beginning of May, we celebrated a big holiday, which is Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. And for us, it might become something trite, something like uh, Christmas. And for us, we can just celebrate it, but not think much about it. But we need to remember every time we come towards this holiday, we must remember what are we celebrating? It is the resurrection of Jesus. Recently, I was talking to a friend of mine who was a missionary. And he serves in a different country. And as everyone else who who serves on a mission. He has a group of people who supports him financially, who supports him in prayer, so that he may go out and share the gospel. And um, he told me that recently he got a letter from one of his partners and told him something very interesting that really touched me. He wrote to this missionary, I no longer believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and cannot support your mission. He says, I no longer believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I can't pray for you now. I can't financially support you because I don't believe in this anymore. And I understand why. Because if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus, then none of it makes any sense. It doesn't have any weight to it. The Bible itself says, if Jesus did not resurrect from the dead, then our faith is for nothing. But when I heard this, I became really sad because this person for such a long time knew Jesus and walked with Jesus and prayed for other people and actively served. But he got to a point of his life where there was a lot of doubts in his life. And he says, I no longer believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Jesus in this passage says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live. And I believe that while the person is still alive, the Lord will continue working in the, per in the person's life. That is what I believe in. While we're still alive, God will continue working with us, which is why we should pray for the people around us, that the Lord would work in their lives, that they would come to know him and believe in him and give their lives to him. But for us, it's really important, brothers and sisters, so that we may never say that in our lives. I no longer believe in Jesus Christ. What do we need to do? I ask myself this. What must I do so that the doubts never overtake me in my life because doubts will come and the devil works in our lives but brothers and sisters when doubts come we must strengthen our faith that the Lord is the resurrection and the life Jesus not only will resurrect Lazarus but can if we continue reading Jesus himself will be resurrected on the third day, as he told his disciples. The resurrection of Jesus is the most important, is the most important thing that has ever happened in our lives. If we take out the resurrection, then our faith doesn't hold, doesn't make any sense. But praise the Lord that Jesus resurrected and he is alive. Amen? He is the resurrection and the life. Never doubt, brothers and sisters, that he is the resurrection. Believe in this and keep strengthening your faith. We, how do we do this? We need to regularly read our Bible. Be in the word of the Lord. 
if if we become too used to it in a way that it becomes boring, try something new. Pray every day. Pray with the Lord. Pray in your own time. Pray with other people, with other brothers and sisters. Come to church every Sunday. Why do we even come? So that we would be encouraged and we'd be filled with the Lord by spending our time with other Christians, other believers. Come to small groups. Be in the world word. Don't just hold the light in yourself. Share with other people. Tell the gospel to other people. Share with other people. That will en encourage you as well, as well as give them an opportunity to come to Christ. Because doubts will be coming into our lives. I can guarantee you, if you don't do all of this, if you don't read the word and pray and come to church, one day you probably will also say, I no longer believe in Jesus Christ. God has given this to us, so which is why we must exercise our faith and strengthen our faith. If we don't live with Christ, then we won't be resurrected with him. If we are not living with Christ, we will not be resurrected with him. In conclusion, I wanted to... Um, give you guys this fact about Lazarus. Another form of his name is Elizar, which is his Jewish name, Elizar. Does anyone know how it's translated? It says, God helped. God is my help. God helps. Elizar. And I pray that God would help us to continue being with him and be in his presence and believing that the Lord is the resurrection and life. As Martha said, as Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. Don't doubt this. Let's pray together so that God would continue working in our lives. Lord Jesus, we're praying to you right now and we thank you that you remind us in this passage that you are the resurrection and the life. That you are the one, the one who was resurrected himself on the, re on the third day. And that your resurrection proved everything that you taught and everything they said is the truth. And I pray that we would be as Martha was. That we would run towards you and that we would look for you. And so that we would say, yes, Lord, I believe. We, we believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Messiah. That you will come again. Glory to you for everything. And I pray that we would remember everything that you do, you do with a purpose. You want us to believe. To those people who don't believe today, I pray that you would keep knocking on their hearts and that they would hear you knocking and would take a step towards you so that we would understand we die, we are mortal. But the saddest thing is if we die spiritually. So I pray that we would all believe that you are the one who gives eternal life. Glory to you for everything. Bless us as we strengthen our faith every day, regularly so that we would encourage each other to walk in the light. And if we see a brother or a sister walking in the darkness, give us understanding how to come to them, to come them, to bring them back to life. Lord, if we ourselves walking today in the darkness and are stumbling, 
give us a way to come back to you, our source of light. We know that we can always hope in that. Thank you, Lord, for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.